hello to everybody who's viewing this. Um, this is Stortkop Confessions, which is a side project of Singing in the Shower concerts. Um, so please go and check that out on Facebook and YouTube if you want to learn more about it. Today I am super excited and super privileged to be joined by Dr. Roland Moses. Um, and I'm going to let him tell you more about his career. He's a South African musician, jazz musician, scholar, composer, the list goes on. So, and Dr. Roland, can you please um, tell us about your career, where it started and what you've been building up for yourself over the years, up until before the pandemic hit us. Okay, well, it's great to be on your show and it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too. <laughs> <That's a laughs> it's long, been a long, long time. time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also great to see you still performing and teaching. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I actually learned to play music in church. I was studying computer science at school and just played music as a hobby. Uh, and then I discovered I had my first piano lesson when I was about 17. And then I switched from uh, computer science at university to music. Um, and at that point, I studied um, jazz piano um, with Darius Brubeck in the Tel University. And I played in lots of bands, um, like jazz bands, trios, and, and more especially dance bands. That's where I learned a lot about the music business, ethics in music, how to behave on the stage, and wow. how to play for two hours at a stretch without any breaks. Uh... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and how to choose the correct repertoire for the function and things like that. And then I later, I was lecturing at the um, University of Natal, and then um, I started lecturing at TUT in 2004. Um, yeah. So I completed uh, my master's degree there at Natal University, and then I studied a bit at, in Sweden at the University of Gothenburg. I was an exchange student there, and um, at TUT, I completed the, a doctoral degree a research one in uh, church music. So I interviewed a whole lot of church musicians in Durban and just to find out about their musical background and how they learn music, what are some of their aspirations as musicians and things like that. And uh, it was all the uh, quantitative like numbers and tables, yeah. but a very interesting study. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to redo it recently. I had a two year sabbatical and I received funding to uh, replicate that study in Durban, Cape Town, and in the U.S. Wow. And that brings us to um, this whole COVID issue. So that was 2018. Yeah. And 2019 is when my sabbatical started, and I managed to go to Berkeley College of Music, and I uh, performed a little there and did some master classes and interviewed all the gospel lecturers and got some really good insights into the music scene there. Um, and then I went to Stockton University in New Jersey and did the same thing. And then uh, Penn State University of Pennsylvania. Uh, and then uh, I ended up in New York. And I interviewed lots of musicians, church musicians there. And that was the end of 2019. And I had funding to do the same thing again in 2020. And in yeah. March 27, yeah. that was the lockdown. So stuffed okay. up my entire, all my plans to travel uh, to the UK and Australia and all different conferences. And I had lots of other gigs in Belgium, uh, Seychelles, and all those things, you know, already in the pipeline and visas being issued and stuff like that. But yeah. it was all cancelled. Yeah. Wow. So that was a diff that was <laughs> quite yes. a heartbreaking. That yeah. So a... you just yeah. Yeah. So you I had all the the funding. It was about um, just to travel. Could have been about sixty or seventy thousand rand. Sure. And yeah, I just had to sit at home and then now think of another way to, to use the funding. So I converted my dissertation into a book I and, see. you know, started um, just doing, being creative and doing stuff like that. Yeah. I see. Wow, Roland, that's a lot to take in. Let me think about that for a few seconds. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's quite serious, man. I mean, especially since yeah. you had the funding. It's not like you can put it on ice. You know, every day time, yeah. time passes by, there's a limit on it. So, yeah, that, mm -hmm. that must have been difficult. But in that, in that context, you were adaptable. Um, you made a plan and you could, I assume you finished your doctorate and, you know, the book... Tell, just tell me more mm -hmm. about the book. Is it available? Can we like read it? Where can we find it? Um, yeah, it's just being edited at the moment. Okay. So I've completed the doctorate in 2015, and this was uh, a scholarship yeah. to um, replicate that whole study, like find out about other musicians. And yeah, okay, um, 
so the the fortunately what happened was the, in 2019 I, uh, I was playing in about 10 different bands and uh in johannesburg mm -hmm. and also met and played with lots of musicians at jazz festivals and they started uh, asking me to do solo concerts so yeah uh, the first one i did was um, at home on using just my iphone mm. and i recorded uh, four pieces of music for it an italian uh, fundraiser to help mm. the nurses and the police and health workers to raise funds because they were you know uh, quite um, they were hit quite badly with the whole virus yeah lots okay. of deaths and stuff like that yeah so um so i started to reinvent myself and then i had to force myself to learn how to use logic and <laughs> get some mics and an audio interface me too <laughs> things i've been, things i've been staying away from but yes. i found it it was very exciting you know yeah and the one of the key things was just to like i already had stuff that i didn't realize that i could use i had a, a good macbook you know that's pretty fast and the iphone is, is also quite good for recording music with the 4k camera and stuff like that so yeah. that was the one of the positives that came out of it and yeah. on the academic side on the research side i'd already had a, a ethical clearance to interview people for my study yeah. so i started interviewing church musicians on how the pandemic had affected them yes. and i interviewed about 12 uh, worship leaders locally and internationally and then also learned a lot about how they are coping and how the church musicians are repurposing what they have already and um, using online platforms and things like that yeah, yeah. exactly wow mm. i would love to read more about that um you know and what's also beautiful about this story is you started out in church that's where it started for you and it's like at this not what's the word like at this high point in your in your in your academic career that's kind of how you're ending it off not ending it off but it's like a yeah. high point for you in, in, to go yeah. back to that world how interesting must that be to to go back to that world as this highly uh, knowledgeable person who has this experience and compare it to your experience in the beginning especially with worship um as a as a as a person i've been in a worship band here in george for maybe two years now and for me it's like a okay. new world it's completely new. What does it mean to worship? How much, how do you analyze the music? How do you prove that this is actually doing something to, to the, um, the people who's listening to it and, and experiencing it with you? So it's a lot of thought actually that goes into it. That's different from the secular world. It's, it's mm. something that I've been thinking out a lot. So I would actually love to, you know, learn more about this and, and check out your work. I think it's yeah, so it's, interesting. It's... Yeah, it's all online. Uh, you, I'll just send you the links. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, if you're talking about the church worship, the, well, most of the musicians I interviewed, especially in the US, yeah. they come to a point where when, when you ask them about their education and they say they actually were taught by the Holy Spirit uh, and they didn't receive any lessons, you know. Actually, so yeah. there's a whole, yeah. It's So wh why is, I do research in that field is because there's no music program specifically designed for these musicians because you don't need to know jazz, or yeah. classical you need exactly. to have some a good good ear training and yeah. a basic knowledge of chords and, and stuff like that exactly. so yeah it's a completely different world uh, compared is. to secular <laughs> music it yeah. is and and on that same note when the pandemic hit um we actually got a permit to continue with worshiping in church in other words performing on a stage but in church but we couldn't do mm -hmm. gigs and then you have to ask yourself, but what is the difference? Why is this a priority? And this is not a priority. You know, that kind of also made me think um, yeah. about it a bit more. But Roland, yeah. so you've already actually covered quite a lot um, regarding the way that you coped during the pandemic in terms of your, your music, what you kept yourself busy with, the new skills that you learned, stuff that you checked out. I identify with not knowing how logic works, you know, and having, having to check that out, getting an interface. Yes, and it's intimidating, but I'm so happy that I did this. I should have done it like 15 years ago. It's, it's yes. almost funny, like I'm so excited about it. Look what I can do, but there's people who've been doing it for 20 years. But anyway, I'm so, I'm so happy that uh, came into my life. Um, and like with you and many others, um, it makes us more independent, um, I think. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, as a person who performs professionally, you, you, this is a large part of your income is to perform, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think like an all round musician like yourself, you're in the teaching world, education, 
performance and academic you really encompass everything that you know is you encompass the whole thing so obviously you had your teaching career to to keep you going but in terms of performance um obviously we did everything online financially a lot of us uh, we had the government that we could approach to get grants from and we, we, we were kind of expecting a lot of support from the government. A lot of people were and they told me that if you some of the guests that I had um, already told me that um, when they applied, they had to supply a contract to prove that this is the income that they were going to get for this amount of time. And then some of them were reimbursed for that um, time, but then it stopped. Nothing, nothing followed um, after that. And two things came to mind for me here. Yeah. The first thing is maybe we are treating this business too informally as artists. Maybe we should just, as a rule, always have our admin ready. With doesn't matter what gig you're doing, just get a contract in place, get the admin done properly, and it should be a standard. Then it doesn't feel weird if you do it. And it will always, it, I think it will create a culture of venues taking us seriously also, and people taking us seriously. And, and you know, then we don't have to struggle like that so much. Um, because the first thing that happened when, when the, the doors were open again for gigging, the venues called us. They called us, hey, can you please come and sing? So then why do you need me to come and perform at your venue? Why do you need me if it's such an informal, hey, so by the way thing, maybe we should treat it a bit more formally. I don't know what your opinion is about that and how you work as a professional. Yeah, so uh, uh, I remember in the States, the guy spoke about a musician union and there was a set fee and you know that covered most of the legal aspects. And yeah, I've always been thinking about that whole contract business for a while, especially yeah. for the smaller gigs, you know, um, mm. that you get, sometimes get canceled at the last minute. But as you point out, you need more support from yeah. another body, like a, a union or something. Yeah. So um, I, I work with specific people who, you know, you, you rely on and you get paid and some of them act as agents. So they, they did have some uh, contracts in place with the larger venues, like I'd play at uh, Katzi's in Rosebank and there were contracts in, in place. Yeah. Um, but this, the, the smaller gigs, yeah, you could, you could draw up a simple contract and mm. j just for the sake of having some evidence of yeah. you know, payment and things like that. And I think that's something to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, I also know that having an online presence like your own website and just building your profile, that, that's what I've learned in the past year, building yeah. a, a good profile online, like, your website with the gallery performances it just makes as to the credibility although you are a credible musician people want to show and see evidence yeah and especially websites cd recordings yeah um, and just a gallery of perform performances who you are besides stuff that you put on facebook you know that's it that's mm -hmm. exactly it and i don't know about you we, uh, we're more or less the same age i think you're a little bit older than me but my mm -hmm. peers who are basically our age um, it's like we, we have a different mindset towards the online thing. Like for yeah. years, I thought, yes, yeah, but how full of yourself must you be now to post every single little rehearsal yeah. that you do? But that's not yeah. what it's about. And I also mm -hmm. had to make that, that mind, that mind um, shift. But the, the, the word that you're using there, credibility, that is, that is the focus. How do you make yourself come across as being credible? And that is really it. And that's important. Yeah. 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 I find um, there's also documenting yourself yeah. uh, on your website, but there's also another danger of overexposure. You know, if you're posting something every day, then people are like, oh, it's you again, just, you know, scroll exactly. up. <laughs> so you have to be, so it's about quality, not, not just quantity. Yeah. Uh, so you have to just be careful of something like that. But yeah, online presence I see is, is actually very important. And the, the younger generation, they are very clued up on that, you know, with IGTV and Instagram and and it's something, I mean, mm. if you have uh, a friend or if you could hire somebody to just pay them a little fee and say, okay, just, these are all my videos. Can you upload them? And, you know, I did that with one of my ex-students, um, uh, like with some videos I had to submit and like, hey, can you just clean this up yeah. and just separate? So I played at a jazz festival with my trio mm. and I was submitting it for something. 
and I just needed to add in the captions and the, the songs and you know things like that. You, you know, a little fee, and then I've used it quite a few times. Mm. So it's it's quite handy to have a good product. Mm. I think so, and I think. Um, in terms of music education, a lot has changed. If I look back at the mm -hmm. Technicon days, um, if, if I had to go through the same program today, it wouldn't really help me a lot. Like I would expect mm -hmm. to learn these things because there's no point in focusing on the technical aspect so much and building relationships with people, which is important. But to get these tools in life that you need to actually go forward, I mean, it's good to mm -hmm. learn video editing. It's good to do that stuff yourself and you can save money and, and get it there. But um, I don't know what the music education system looks like nowadays, but I would assume that somebody is saying, you know what, this is important. Let's include it. Let's do little workshops about it. I think Tumsa and Sambro, they're doing a lot of workshops um, nowadays, which I find extremely valuable and insightful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in touch with Samro. I mean, we've been having meetings in the past month discussing that music business program. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I've also started an online music program now okay. that I developed in 2018 in Amsterdam as part wow. of an innovation project. Yeah. So it, it uses asynchronous mobile technology where you upload videos onto an e portfolio and then I assess them on there. And then students also now have their own e portfolio that they can use for gigs or even okay. competitions. Yeah, so lots of our students wow. have been using that and winning competitions and, and stuff like that. Wow. Um, so we actually changed our curriculum around <laughs> at UT to include okay. all that sort of stuff in there, yeah. And access to technology and, and those kind of things. But with um, we're looking at, well, personally, just opening up the degree programs and music education to add in and include an online variation. So people who, who don't want to study full time can still study a few courses uh, online, you know, exactly. and not have contact classes. And it works really well. Uh, uh, and easy stuff, just setting a Google Drive, putting up demonstrational videos yeah. of uh, little pieces, little concepts and things like that. And the students love it. I mean, it's, it's so much easier now. I can imagine. Um, mm. it, it, it immediately makes me think of any other profession where you have to earn you know, professional points. What do they call that system? You have to go and, and, and constantly upgrade your qualification and your skills. Oh, yeah. you know? the, the credits and things like that. Yeah, the credits. Mm. So imagine if we... Upskilling. Yeah. Do yeah. we have something like that? You know, a musician? Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, what we've been doing is looking at, first of all, uh, employability. I've actually written articles on this. Uh, it's been yeah. published in some as a South African journal okay. uh, based at Rhodes University on you know how we the teaching methods and how that impacts the success rate of the student like the marks that they achieve and how that relates to employability and you know we call okay. we call it work integrated learning which is a part of the course now so in the students third and fourth year well actually now from first to fourth year we yeah. organize gigs for you at you know local venues or other performance spaces like casinos and stuff like that and that when you play that gig that counts towards your mark and you also Will earn an income from that you know but you're getting industry experience from yeah. the from the word go you go and book the gig you sort out the contract there's actually a report between you and the manager of the gig and yeah. that's how we evaluate so so that's really important especially at a university of technology because sometimes you're training people but at the yeah. end if you don't give them insight or help them um, be employable then they you know <laughs> they don't have any work or they change and they lose the focus on the actual dreams of wow. playing music and yep. performing. Mm. Yes, I think it must be so exciting to be a music student nowadays with everything that you're saying now. You know, that's truly exciting. It's life changing, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah. Roland, I don't know. I'm thinking, I don't know what else to ask you. You've kind of covered so much that I've been wondering about. So I'm going to give so the I can tell to you. you. Yeah, yeah, I think when we spoke earlier, um, like yeah. so I was playing in about 10 bands and then lockdown and then no bands. So what yeah. we did, uh, we had a six piece band and we now repurposed that band into a trio and started performing as a, a trio uh, component. Well, yeah, like a three piece. But uh, when you get to the gigs and you, like, you know, it still feels a bit empty from a six piece with the brass section and, and drums. Yeah. So we yeah. started actually using drum tracks and there's some cool amps around, you know, and the guys I played with previously, like, 
well, no way will we ever play with tracks. But yeah. when we put them on, then you start to realize, okay, this is making sense. So I think in this new online and virtual world that we are stuck in for a while, mm. uh, being flexible is, is actually very important. And also having some resilience and you know, staying with your, focusing on your dreams and focusing on what you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, very important during, during this time, yeah. That's, a, that's such a good point. I want to add to that um, and comment about that. You, when, we, when we quickly spoke before we recorded, you said, um, you know, do I have a lot of time on my hands? Now, this is something, I mean, all of us had a lot of time on our hands in the beginning, especially. Yeah. And something I realized that if I don't spend that time um, wisely by doing things that keeps me energized and inspired doesn't matter what it is but it, it gives me an opportunity to express my creativity and know that i'm still doing something that's part of music and part of my identity as an artist i will keep saying because if i if i'm only trying if i'm only practicing that's very one-dimensional or if i'm only uh trying to now write 50 songs in two weeks i mean i need to balance it out and be creative so this project yeah. for me is really part of that. I am still doing this, even though I'm, I'm busy now. This is part of that energy and keeping it alive. And um, so I'm really happy that people are join, joining into this because it can actually make a difference to start speaking about the real, you know, the realities of the industry and what it takes, the hard work that it takes and everything. So yeah. um, it's like a little baby that I'm putting out there to, to see what happens to it. Um, Roland, yeah, no. I Mm. I think it's um sorry there's, there was some lady there. sorry for interrupting you there. I no, thought no, you stopped no. <laughs> <laughs> but um the one thing we also would have to touch on is the mental well-being during this time you know yeah because I was um that Sunday before the lockdown I was in Durban handing out surveys to those musicians and yes okay, my study's back on the road and yeah and as I was attending my cousin's funeral she didn't die of COVID it was some other issues yeah. Um, and then when I flew back, I listened to the news and it was like lockdown. I was, what's going on? And like my whole world just crashed, you know. Yeah. And I was just this morning from nine till just before this on, a, on a, the leadership program and we were talking about anxiety in the workplace and stress. Yeah. And the guy was saying one way to combat anxiety is to do some self-reflection and what do what makes you happy. Mm. And I was thinking about that. Because I also result, like went to doctors to get some medication. Like first time in yeah. my life. I remember wow. when I spoke to you, you were saying like, what? You're always so calm. I'm like, no, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Can't believe it, Rodin. Yes. Yeah. So then um, I was thinking, okay, what makes me happy? So then I started just playing the piano again, practicing and composing like most musicians, you know, yeah. uh, riding my bicycle, doing some exercise, composing. That's and it. then you realize, oh, yes, if you it's mental well-being is, is actually something very important during this time that we also have to think about you know those factors that trigger certain emotions yeah. and uh, lots of music musicians have had it tough especially if um doing performances were your sole income That's uh, what do you do after that some guys um started like they call it a side hustle which is really interesting like getting into real estate yeah um producing getting more into film music writing yeah. for netflix and yep. those are important avenues to speak about. Uh, so musicians don't only now think about the performance space, you know, think yep. beyond that. Like while you're performing, you record it live, then you've got a, a DVD or a live stream going, mm -hmm. you can, you know, sell some tickets online and you, so you've got a few things going. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's exciting and scary at the same time. But um, I think the key there is also finding your purpose in life at mm. this point you know and what's meaningful for you and things like that i think so too because from that energy everything that you're supposed to do will come a lot easier you don't have to overthink something in our planet and it's this business thing it will just come out of itself it yeah. will just go um what have now said for this um you see, I'm an extrovert. I missed this also to be able to speak with musicians, you know, not mm -hmm. having to do to, to, to gigs. I, like I'm, I'm enjoying this so much to speak to everybody about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I take now a few say, oh, yeah, yeah. the mental health thing and um, being very one dimensional in your career. 
in my experience with the relationships that I've had with people is when they're only doing performance all the time, they get used to this very bipolar way of living. Ne? Mm -hmm. Now you have a lot of money. Now you don't. Now you have the applause. Now you don't. When's my next yeah. income and my next gig, my next applause coming? So it's, it's, it's a very unhealthy way of living in any way, I think, if you're only mm -hmm. living for that. So it is so important to diversify and do other stuff and, and, and find your voice somewhere else as a musician. But to navigate that is not easy, I think. Yeah. And to, to be a normal person. I mean, yeah. we know of some mutual friends, musicians who are, I mean, you can't invite them to your party. <laughs> they will ruin the party. Ek weet, dit is een absolute waarheid. Dat is so true. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, my, my wife organized a surprise party and, you know, out of goodwill, she invited some of my musician friends yeah. and some of my, like, church friends and some of my yeah. uh, tennis <laughs> friends, you know. <laughs> and man, that was the worst party ever. Is it? Yeah, is it? Like, there were three groups of sep of people, you know, in, standing in separate corners, and then you yeah. don't know what to do. That is so true, eh? Mm -hmm. Exactly. When it's my birthday, I do three small little parties: a breakfast with my church friends, and then a late lunch with my, with my, I don't know, like chilled uh, friends, and then at night we go with all the musicians, and then it's the jam session and yeah. everybody. Because this is what happens at parties, now We want to make music, yeah. but then the re the half of the crowd is like, oh, when are they going to stop now? Da -da -da. <laughs> so it is truly really yeah. like that, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah. anyway, yo, this, yo, it's, it's really interesting. We're complicated mm -hmm. beings. And, um, yeah. yeah. Have you noticed uh, also if churches have changed their outlook on online services and things like that and playing music yeah. with tracks and pre recorded stuff? Yep. Uh, totally. Yeah, I've done quite a lot of that. Have um, you? Yeah, which is quite interesting. So we recorded uh, four separate, it was violins and uh, multi tracks piano. Yeah. And a few singers and recorded separately and they put it together on Zoom and yep. aired that. Um, I see. Yeah, so that's all another avenue to look at. And some of our students have actually got into that. So they perform like the one drummer, he'll play the, the drums, re record it, and yep. then record the other musicians, put it together. And um, music directors generally would, would have to do that. And then that's your service in the morning. So that's, you know, other employment opportunities to look into and not, not shy yeah. away from. Yeah. yeah. I agree with you, um, but yeah, that is really cool. But then the question is again, like, we did the same thing more or less where we were at our homes and recorded our things at home and sent it through and they made a video out of it. But then at some point I started asking, but listen, I, I can't contextualize this song. What is the message that, that, that goes with this song? Because I still want to feel like I'm worshiping, even though I'm doing take one, take two, take three, and it's all a technical exercise. You know, at the yeah. end of the day, when I finally get it right, I still want to cut, well, feel like I'm worshiping. So that's mm -hmm. like the question for me is how do we know that we're worshiping? How do you, when somebody says, this is an anointed musician. What do you mean? Because Whitney Houston is also anointed, even though she's singing mm -hmm. secular music. How, how, what does that mean? This is something that's extremely interesting to me. But I'll go and read yeah. your work. I'll go and read a, about it a bit more. Yeah. Um, because people in church don't know always. They don't, I don't know. They, it's like they don't think about this stuff. Um, a yeah, lot. it's very difficult to come up with criteria for an anointed yeah. musician <laughs> to A, B, and C. Nee? But I, I, I learned something in, from some singers in the States, um, and they were saying, like, especially when, there's, when you're singing a ballad, yeah. and the, the emotion you would capture is you're not singing it for yourself, you're singing it for somebody in the congregation who's going through yeah. exactly what you're singing about in those lyrics, you know? So you sing yeah. it from that standpoint, and then yeah. you'd have some sort, of communi some, yeah, some sort of communication or purpose or... That's you know, some it. satisfaction as such yeah um, um like with the recording thing that you just spoke about doing it at home and then putting it out there that is in service of the people who are listening to it but there is mm -hmm. this reciprocal energy you know that should be there yeah um, how do you create it online with a little pre-recorded how do you create that vibe it's you know it's interesting and complicated i don't know yeah yeah there's a lot of psychology behind it also and the, uh, the flow of the music and yeah there's a few just you can just read, read up a bit on that so the one thing i i re remembered that i started doing was um 
when I was kind of self-taught, I would take the, the Bible and play through the Psalms. So I'd put, yeah. open up the Bible in the book of Psalms and I'll just try to compose something. Yeah. And I, I did, um, I'll send you the link to that video. You can maybe yeah. edit a bit. So I'd yeah. play a melody and then I have the, the verse coming on and yeah. each melody ties in with a particular uh, verse. And that, that for me was the, one of the best ways to teach myself how to improvise. You know, because wow. the, the word of God is very inspiring. It I is. mean, it's, it's the rawest form of, and the source of music, in fact, you know, like <laughs> if you go into that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, right. So during this time also, you'd find you have to be grounded in something because yeah. your whole world is brittle. Everything's co collapsing and, you know, there's so much of um, ambiguity. Um, yeah. And they, they spoke about, we, we used to our lives being in a linear formation where it goes up in grades, and, you know, but now it's so like non-exponential. You can be down one day and then up in the sky the next day and down again. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's for me to be grounded in, especially in my faith in, in Christianity, that, that was the main thing that is helping me not not being employed or you know that sort of thing because my wife was my daughter is in matric this year my wife was saying this morning you know we don't even care if she passes or not because with this whole COVID thing in we don't even know who's going to be around you know that's it now <laughs> that is true that's a yeah, true so, thought yeah yeah if you're grounded in something it's it's very important during this time otherwise you're gonna it's gonna be tough for, for people exactly and, I think that's part of the reason it was almost, um, you know, I wasn't very active as a performance before the pandemic. I was active, but not nearly as active as I'm now because of that exact thing. I might mm -hmm. die next week, my, whoever around me might pass away and how will that affect me? So let me just live life, just live your life and do your thing. Forget about all this other stuff. And it's been mm -hmm. really beautiful, actually. It's been really enjoyable in that regard. Yeah. But so we have to put yeah. money, food on the table and... And, and you know, keep things yeah. real. It's also the outlook on on the gigs that we do. I remember we played once years ago at Huckleberries yes. on, outside. Yes. And um, like nowadays, uh, if you have fancy equipment, you only want to play inside. You know, previously prior to the oh, pandemic, yeah. and now everyone's a little more flexible with the with the management. Like, sure, sure, where do you want us to set up? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. You know, but I think that's the attitude also to yeah. to remember for a long time. Like, just be easy going. Don't be difficult. Yeah. You know, keep like we were talking about the music business side. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. be match your character to your talent. You get highly talented people, but horrible <laughs> characters. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's, there, there were a few memes floating around on Facebook with this musician group about how to choose your band, you know. And <laughs> I didn't know this. I, I would always choose bands with the best musicians, but then <laughs> they, they say, um, like, choose the right people. They, they're good on the instrument, but they're also easy to get along with. And you can also make music with them because, you know, you, it's, it's a conversation that you're having. Yeah. on stage and you have to it's give and take and negotiation and not about egos and you know yeah. playing as a group and, and things like that yeah. exactly yes Roland nee. yeah. and we're talking so lacquer now nee. but I, now that I have your time I'm gonna I'm gonna exploit it we're almost done <laughs> I promise um that's the thing about jazz for me that's like the big thing that jazz taught me as a person I don't I, I didn't go into it and and study it to become a full-on like jazz musician but it's given me that ability to know that you will never be as good as you want to be. It's a journey. And in any situation, whether you're teaching or playing with a band, you have to have that humility. You have to listen. You have to be open to the people around you and problem solve on the spot and take go into this direction. Oh, that didn't work. Now we're going to go this. So that's how, why I value jazz so much in my personal life also, not just as a musician, you know, to be open to it and communicate be open especially in church also ne? yeah um, mm -hmm. but i think are... jazz also um, gives you a lot of flexibility and, uh, and versatility in the music style because from there you yeah. can play rock yeah. uh blues pop music r&b the whole thing and yeah. another thing was like i find during the pandemic is musicians who only wanted to play in in jazz clubs and concert halls and yeah. now actually opening up to playing at weddings and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that's an eye opener, as you're saying, you need to, you know, pay your bills. So yeah. the concert halls are not happening. They're not they're closed. So what are you going to do? So, yeah. you know, kind exactly. of realize that versatility is also the key.
to playing all sorts of gigs, not just boxing yourself into one one style of music or one sort of gig. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Wow. So, Yesi, thank you for for joining me in this project. No problem. Thanks it for having so me. It was so nice to chat again. And um, you you are still the calm Roland Moses that I remember. <laughs> I think so. Um, <laughs> And I'm happy that you're that you're coping with it and that you're going on and that you've done this amazing work. I actually can't wait to have a look at it and read and um, maybe perhaps have another conversation about your work. Uh, I find it really interesting. Yeah. Uh, no problem. I look forward to it. Yeah. Roland, um, just a last question. Why did you want to join this project? What do you think is the value of, of this conversation? Uh, that about the music industry and music edge and all that stuff. Yeah, I I think it's. Um, I'm trying to find that word. It's it's an honest conversation with what's actually happening on the ground, mm. uh, and things that people don't talk about. You know, there's no script, there's no um, funding for you to say the right thing. There's no adverts and what's it like sponsors. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> So that's what I, I mean. Watching your some of your gigs in the in the shower and you sang with your daughter and you know yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I find it very very exciting. Um, but one of the Thank reasons is um, also like I looked at the list of musicians. I know most of them like yeah. different perspectives on what's happening on the ground, undiluted, um, yeah. organic conversation, and I yeah. think that's you know during this time you don't know how long you're going to be on this earth, and you know there's no time for faffing around and you know uh, being ambiguous just be honest in what you say and what you do and yeah. i think that's what your show is about you know it's yeah. um and other other fact is also the creative part where you saying hey i sound fantastic in my shower that's actually a cool performance space there's <laughs> 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 also your like the creativity uh, part but the main yeah. thing uh, about the show is yeah the other honesty the uh, undiluted conversation and I'm sure I'll think of more things when we're done now but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but you know that's how it goes but yeah. um yeah for now I mean that's why uh, I was excited I was just a little busy but I'm glad we finally got to do it yeah I'm also glad we did it and the thing is it's just so funny like you 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 have your your Dr. Roland Moses in your shower you know and that's part of the symbolism is listen we're all doing this job it's a job. You should take it seriously. It's yeah. a profession. Let, let's mm -hmm. let's cut the veneer. Let, let's try and, and, and eliminate it a little bit so we can help each other and yeah. not feel so alone during this time. Yeah. 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 I tell my students that when you on the stage, nobody's asking you for your qualification. They just yep. want to hear you play. <laughs> you know, yep. They're not asking yeah. you for your diploma and degree. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. And, uh, sorry, I'm going to carry on now. But there was somebody else who said that you know, and the public keeps on supporting this rubbish music and the public, uh, you know, blaming the public. But at the end of the day, we're doing this for the public. We, we yes, actually sure. depend on them. They can do whatever mm -hmm. they want. We can't be angry at them for supporting yeah. whatever they want to support. And so yes. we're very thankful for As them. A, yeah, that's okay. very important because I spoke to a very old guy, Noel Stockton. Yeah. Um, he's a legend in the music industry, music education from, and, and the performer, yeah. well-known performer and arranger. And yeah. when I did a concert with him, there was three pianos mm -hmm. and he, he picked me up from the airport and he said, you know what? I give you some advice. Music is about entertainment, whether you're in a concert hall or whatever. If you book to play, there's an entertainment factor. So rem it. always remember the context. Like if we have yeah. got this gig playing in a hotel and it's yeah. happening for quite a while because we reinvent the repertoire all the time, you know, we, we would play one or two. Yeah out there jazz songs but then i'd take a sade song and reharmonize it a bit uh, and then like a, you know just yeah and then oh. change put on a road sound yeah. um just to make it a little fun for the the jazz guys but at the same time yeah. you have to be considerate and um cognizant of who you're playing for and you want to keep the gig so that's don't go too out there if you want to play giant steps then get a jazz gig you know that's 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 it thing. And then that's yeah. okay for that. Exactly that. But it's not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we forget that it's not about us. It's about mm -hmm. the vibe, the venue, the people, everything else. Yeah. 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 So you're okay. Roland. Well, thank you so much again. And um, good luck with everything that's lying ahead of you, all the work that you do and the Technicon. Like, I wish I was a mm -hmm. young student now. I would definitely yeah. go back. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. all of the best to you. 
Um, yeah, same to you. And good luck with the rest of the show and the people coming on. Yeah, thank you. I've been following it and yeah, continue awesome. to support you. Thank you okay. so much for that. Get ready. Okay. Keep well. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>